video, we're going to be looking at coffee beans. Before the advent of the third wave specialty movement, coffee was seen as a commodity. You picked it up in the supermarket, and generally speaking, you had no idea where it came from, what type of beans were used, or when it was roasted. What the third wave specialty coffee movement has done is increase the transparency behind the bean's origins, giving that knowledge back to the consumer. So now on a coffee pack, you'll get information like the bean variety, the country, the region it's from, the processing method, and the roast date. All things that help you make more informed decisions on the beans you choose. There are many species of coffee beans, but the two most common and well-known are Robusta and Arabica. Robusta is not as common in the specialty scene, while Arabica is the norm in third wave specialty. Within that, there are a whole lot of different varieties, ranging from what's known as the heirloom varietals in Ethiopia, to varieties made in a lab, like the SL28 and SL34s in Kenya, to Tipica, Katura, Katwai and Bourbon, which you usually see throughout lots of Central America. Like wine, there are literally hundreds of different coffee bean varietals. Coffee beans aren't actually beans. They are the seed of a cherry that grows on coffee trees. Similar to the analogy of grapevines for wine, certain coffee bean varietals grow best in certain countries, depending on many factors, like the soil, the altitude, the climate, the yield, resilience to pests, and so on. For the farmers, it's also a balancing act. They might ask themselves if they can grow good quality beans that are easily sold for a decent price, or something that might be low yielding but taste amazing and have lots of really, really unique qualities that are much more marketable. Something like the Gesher varietal. In the past, Gesher was considered too hard to farm because of its low yields, but a few farmers realized how super tasty the beans are with great sweetness, and now this variety commands a very high price. In terms of regions, Coffee beans are grown all over the world between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn, sometimes referred to as the coffee belt. In particular, you have South and Central America, the Caribbean, Central and Eastern Africa, and Asia. When you're buying coffee beans to use in your machine at home, whether you have a full-on automatic espresso machine or a drip or filter style, the most important thing is that the beans are fresh. As you'll see in some of our other videos, we can't emphasize this enough. Without fresh beans, even the most advanced and expensive machine is not going to deliver the coffee that you want. As I said earlier, that's one of the many reasons specialty coffee beans are the way to go, because all the information you need to make your choice is on the pack. If we look at one of my packs here from Fluzy, you'll see that the beans come from Anna Daisy Lanos. Her farm is 1800 meters above sea level, and the beans have a fruity and sweet flavor profile. Most importantly, it tells us when the coffee was roasted. The coffee should ideally be used between five and 30 days after it's been roasted. Too early within those first five days and the coffee can be quite volatile because there's a lot of carbon dioxide that needs to be expelled. After 30 days, the beans begin to age. The region and type of flavors are also indicated on the pack. For example, if we were talking about Kenyan coffee, we might expect to see higher acidity with winey, grapefruit, blueberry type flavors. Or if we were talking about Colombian coffees, we might expect to see stone fruit flavors, a big body, chocolatey sweetness. Another thing to consider is that coffee cherries are a fruit. So just like buying seasonal fruit and vegetables, you can choose seasonal coffee beans and this will affect the flavor you get out. Then there's single origin coffee versus blended coffee. Whiskey is probably the easiest analogy here. So if you want something that's really going to showcase a way of making whiskey, a storage method, the barrel it's matured in and so on, you'd go for a single malt. But if you want something that's an everyday, more balanced whiskey, you might go for a blend. The same applies to coffee. A single origin will be from a certain region, country or farm, whilst a blend may come from many origins. Check it out. The other part of choosing coffee beans is the roast level, light, medium, or dark. This will dictate how you make the coffee. And if you wanna see more on roasting, check out video two in this series. Historically, coffee was roasted dark. And in that, a lot of the bitterness comes out as well because the sugars are perhaps over caramelized. Nowadays, there is more control over the roasting process, which allows us to bring out different flavors in the beans. Generally, the lighter the bean is, the more acidic it could be and the more nuanced the flavors. So expect a fruitier flavored coffee. This is generally preferred for drip or filter drinkers. 
The medium roast offers a balance between acidity and sweetness, while darker roasts lean towards the bitter, chocolatey and fudgy side, flavours that pair well with milk. Ultimately, choosing beans comes down to personal preference. I would suggest you try coffee beans roasted in all styles from many different countries and regions until you find your favourite ones. Then use those to create your third wave specialty coffee at home.